Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to talk about programming a hypergeometric program uh, for working with hypergeometric distributions in a TI-84 calculator. Uh, this will work for a TI-83 calculator as well. So remember that the TI-Inspire and the TI-84 both have built-in PDF and CDF functions for the geometric and binomial distributions, but they do not have such built-in functions for the hypergeometric distribution which is kind of unfortunate because the hypergeometric is really uh, almost as useful as the binomial and probably at least as useful as the geometric. Now, the hypergeometric PDF, however, is made up of three combinations. Combinations are built into the calculator. So we could do PDFs by just doing the three combinations. But that means that we should be able to program this in, and the TI-84 does allow us to program in programs. Now, the TI-Inspire, if you watched the last video, we saw how it will allow us to program actually new functions. So it essentially has a function now, if you program it in like the last video, where it will actually figure out um, hypergeometric functions, where the hypergeometric PDF and the hypergeometric CDF work pretty much like the binomial PDF and binomial CDF. Now, unlike the Inspire, the TI-84 does not allow us to program new functions, but it does to allow us to write what we call programs. And so we're, we're going to do here is we're going to program a function, uh, not, program a program on the uh, TI-84 called HGO, okay, or HGO CDF program. And it will serve in a similar manner to the HGO uh, uh, function, CDF function that we program into the Inspire. Now notice we don't really need to have an, a separate hypergeometric PDF program because if you just let lower equal upper in the way we had the, the HGO CDF work on the Inspire, that will be just the probability that X equals L and, or X equals U that same thing, just that one, probably that one number. So it, this is going to take care of the PDF and CDF in one program. So let's see how we start uh, programming a function in. Okay, so here's the calculator. The first thing that you're going to want to do is hit the program button. And when you do that, this comes up. Now you may have a list of functions. I already have one that I've did this program in, HGO CDF. In fact, these screenshots are from when, while I was putting this in. But if you want to do this from scratch for a new one, you're going to arrow over and hit new and enter. And when you do this, you can type a name. And you just use the alpha keys. It should already be an alpha lock. So you just type in uh, well, actually, you could name it whatever you want. I want to name it H uh, G O uh, G E O and so forth. Okay, I'm going to quit that because I already have it in here. Okay, once you put that in a new name and hit enter, it will come up like this. And it'll program. It'll say program name equals, and we can go from there. Now, once you have some code typed in, and you want to modify the code. Say you want to put part of this in and come back later, you can go to edit and put it in. So it'll say program HGO CDF, which is what I'm going to call it. And it gets to this point where you start putting in this information here. Now notice now when you hit program, okay, let me go back. When you hit program here, you've got execute, edit, and new. Edit an existing program, run a program, execute, or create a new program. Those are your only options. But once you're in the edit mode of a particular program, now when you hit program, you get some different screens. Under These are control statements. If, then, else, for, while, repeat, end. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got a few others. Pause, label, go to, and a few others, right? I.O. is input, output statements. Input, prompt, display, and so forth. And you can actually call execute one program from another. So the first thing I want is, is actually a display statement. So if I hit that, it puts display here. 
So we put in a line of code here. After we get to the end of the line, we hit the enter button and it'll go to the next line. Each line of code will start with a colon here. All right, so here's some of the screens that you see if you hit program. On the right here, you're going to see the actual program. So I'm going to already have this in here, but let me see if I can kind of take you through some of this. So this particular program, we're going to start with display. Then you need, now put it in alpha lock, which is second alpha lock there. And now you see these, sim, the, you can type in the text here. Uh, in this case, it's everything that's kind of, uh, the alpha button is a green, so it's all the green stuff here. Well, the quote is above the plus, so that will be quote. And you type in T O T. I'm looking above the keys for the T A. Look for the letters there, see? L, and they're in alphabetical. Okay, and this one is, I've got an extra T there. T O T A L, and space is right here, it's above the zero. And then I said total population, quote. Hit enter. Now what that's going to do is when we run the program, it's going to type those characters on the screen. Not the quotes, but what's in between them. So it'll type total population. And then I want, it wouldn't all fit on one line, so I want another display, size S. So it's telling you the S is going to represent the size of the population. Again, usually we let that be capital letter M, N. But here we're going to use N for the uh, sample size, so we need a different letter. Okay. Now, then this is going to we're going to prompt us. Then we then we push prompt S. Now, how do I get to uh, prompt? Okay, we go to program I O. Display was number three. Prompt is number two. So I can just type two, or I can arrow down to two and then hit enter. So I can type 2, prompt, and then S is alpha, and then the S there. And, of course, enter will take us to the next line. Now, what that does is that when you run, this, when you run the program, it's going to type on the screen. Now, total population on one line. The next line is going to type size S. And the next line, when you run it, it's going to type, it's going to come up and say S question mark, and it's going to pause there and wait for the user to put in the value of S that is required. So it's asking the user to put in the total population size and it's telling us it's storing it as letter S. Now, what else do we need to put in? Well, display number of six, number of display successes in and then population. That's going to take up about three lines to do that. So number of successes in population and then say prompt M Remember, prompt is uh, program IO2. It says right here, over here on this slide. That helps. And that, and then you put in M. So now what's it going to do? It's going to ask, it's going to stop at this point and ask us to put in a value for M when we run it. After that, we display sample size, prompt N. And then interval of success is N. sample and then lower prompt for L and upper prompt U. So it's going to find the probability that X is between L and U inclusive. So there are, if you need to pause at this point and see see what we have here, see if you can get this much typed in and see if you can catch up with me and come back to this. Uh, when you get caught up. Press pause now. Okay, so now we're to the point in the program where we have um, got everything in the, in, all the inputs in. After we do that prompt you, we have uh, lower and upper limits. We got all the inputs we in. So now what we do is we're going to store 0 and P just to make sure that starts out with the empty or with 0 in it. 
So zero store P. Remember the store key is this STO key right down here, right above the on key. It's one above that STO. That gets you the arrow. So zero store alpha P. Now this right here is the guts of it right here. It's actually just one line repeated over and over again within a what's called a for loop. So right here in this line where you see uh, where you see four. right there in that line. Well, first of all, let's just get it in there and then we'll explain what it does. So to do four, it's program and under control, it's number four. Four is four, so that's kind of nice. So control four is four. Oh, and it does the open parentheses. Now we put our letters, this is K comma L comma U close parentheses. If you remember that this is like our K is our counting variable and from L to U. This is our indices on our sum. If we wrote this out in math notation, we'd be summing from K equals L up to U. So this is the formula that we're programming in. Uh, it's M choose X times S minus M choose N minus X over S choose N, and that's the probability that X uh, that the x equals this this little x and the probability that x is between L and x is we're going to do this and in place of the x now I need to modify that a little bit okay so this is actually k here and here instead of x but k is going to vary from an x value of lower up to x value upper and all the x values in between so we're going to find up all those PDFs add them up and that's going to give us the total probability between L and U inclusive. Okay, so this sum is going to be affected by this for loop. So you can see the screens over here. So the for loop says start with K equals the lower and then execute this code, which is just really in this case one line until you get to the end. When you get to the end, you add one to K and if it's bigger than this upper one here, we stop and go on. If it's not, you execute it again. So it'll do this do this, this line of code once for uh, k equals l. Then it'll do it again for k equals l plus 1. Then it'll do it again for k equals l plus 2, and so forth. And the last time through, k is u. It'll finish this code. Then it'll jump up to k equals u plus 1. It's too big. And so it'll go on past the end statement to uh, our display or answer statements, which are down here. Notice that the guts of it is this basic, basic one step right here. So what do we have? We have n choose k, that's this part right here of our formula, times s minus m, this part right here, which I put in parentheses, choose n minus k, which I also put in parentheses. I put this whole combination in parentheses, that one as well, and then a whole parentheses for the numerator. So that's from here to here. Notice that's a total, okay. Then we're also going to have a division, that's here, which is here, and we're dividing by parentheses S choose N, which is the denominator, and then what we what we do with that fraction is that's going to be the probability the first time through the probability of L. Well, we're going to add that to the value we have for P. And then we're going to store that back in P. So P started out with 0. We add this back in. Now it's gone up to be just the probability that X equals L. Then it runs it through again, again for X equals L plus 1. It's going to find that new probability, add it to our running total in P, and keep doing this till we get to the end, and then P is going to be the value we're looking for. That's our probability. Cumulative probability, or the total probability between this interval anyway. So now we display it, and we're going to display it this way. Display, quote, P, uh, left parentheses, L, less than or equal to X, less than or equal to U, close parentheses, equal, quote. So it'll actually print those characters on the screen. Then I'm going to try to, if it will do a fraction form exactly, we'll have it do it. Most of the time this will just won't work, but let's try it anyway. 
display P, change to fraction, and then display P. So it'll try to display it once in fraction form and then once in decimal. Most of the time these will both just come out to be decimal forms because it doesn't uh, change it to a nice fraction form. But if it does have a, if it does happen to be a small enough example that it has a nice fraction answer uh, that it can figure out, it'll go ahead and do that for us as well. So a couple things that you may want to uh, check on put, putting this in. So the four I've already said is uh, program number control number four. Uh, K of course is just alpha, and then uh, K, comma L U so forth. You know where NCR is, I think, or by this point, but let's just go back and check that. So NCR, remember, is under math. Uh, left arrow to probability. NCR is number three. Okay. Uh, I think everything else is explanatory. The store. The store there is this STO key right down here. And the end is... Uh, program and control number seven. So program and then seven. We've already talked about display in quotes. Now the less than you can find that under test. So second math gives you all your inequalities and, and equals and not equals. So uh, we want less than or equal to. So that's number six. And then, uh, then you can do alpha x, test again, less than or equal to, number 6, alpha u, close parentheses, equals, again, under test, first one. And the quote is alpha plus, that's the quote. And there we go, display p in the fraction. And when you quit, it automatically saves it. So you don't have to worry about saving it. It does it automatically when you quit. Now when I hit program, it's, it's actually there. Now let's run the program. I'll actually see. You can actually watch it running here. So to run the program, you might have other programs on here. But find this program. Go to execute, which is the first thing. Find the program and hit enter. And then hit enter once more to run it. See, it says total population size S. So let's look at this example. There are N equals 23 balls in an urn. 15 are red. We choose N equals 6 to them without, without replacement. So it's hypergeometric. If we did it with replacement, we would be binomial. Binomial distribution. And here we let X be the number of red balls. We want to know the probability that X is between 3 and 6. So the size of the population is capital N, 23, and the program it's S. So that's 23. The number of successes in the population is 15. 15 successes. The sample size, we're going to choose six of them. And we want to go between three and six. So the lower is three, and the upper is six. And there's the probability. It gave it to us twice because it's trying to make it into a fraction, but it can't do it. So there it is. Here you can see all those same screenshots right here. Now, on the TI Inspire, we, we did this in an earlier video. We found the exact, it would tell us the fraction there. There it is exactly, and approximately at least it's this. Uh, the TI Inspire has a couple more digits if you display all of them, but it's the same number. So, there we go. Put that in your calculator. That's going to be very important. So, if you have a TI-84, you want to do that. If you've got the TI Inspire, you want to just do it the way we did in the previous video. But let's get this program in, and we're going to assume that you have this from here on out. And this is going to be very useful for us um, to help calculate these probabilities.